damage. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Tom. <laughs> sorry. <coughs> go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry, something in my throat. <clears> throat> oh. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to You Can't Win. This is Tom here, and I'm joined by Don, as usual. Today, we have returning guests, Agile Tablet and Sid, and we are just going to be shooting the shit. I'm not really sure what we're going to be talking about. I saw a picture of a fish McMuffin, so that may come up. Um, but Sid lives in LA and LA, I was thinking about this, may be the worst city in the country. So thoughts, Sid? Um, it's up there. Yeah. I was just, uh, I was going to say before we got started, it's just about the witching hour where, um, all the lunatics start parading down my street screaming in pain. So are you uh, serious? <laughs> every, I mean, yeah, like pretty much every night there's. There's someone, so is it Maybe is you'll... it is it just like is it is it homeless people? Is it yeah, people who yeah, live well, around there who are just in pain and maybe being targeted? No, <laughs> okay. By the CIA. No, it's uh, you know, homeless people. Oh, uh, yeah. Havana syndrome. That's what they call it. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're walking around clutching their ears and saying, "Ay, Dios mío." <laughs> Are you on like a main drag or something like that? Or is it like, you know, are you... I am, you know, I'm a block off of Hollywood Boulevard, so... Okay. Right, pretty much. It's a... It's just a tiny step away from all the action, so... Sure. How long have you been there now? Um... Like a year and four months-ish. Yeah. And uh, is it is it better than Tom says, or is it okay, or what's going on? It's hard for me to say, um, just because I moved right in the middle of the sure. pandemic, and yeah. things still really aren't, from what I can tell, like back to normal. Um, mm-hmm. I is mean, that I, are you going mostly by like what? The like, because because Ryan has been the there street. for a long time, right? So, like, are you going by what he considers? like kind of normal or whatever yeah yeah and screams per capita as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah it's uh i don't know it's it's hard for me to answer when people are like how is it because i still don't really feel like i know um mm. but also i don't really want to know so sure yeah are these people in the street maybe <laughs> mannish looking women <laughs> Like what high school hell? age, because I know in California you can. Uh, it's just like a lot of high school kids going trans and stuff, and it's Jesus. like a big thing. So I'm just thinking this is like that trans regret that I've heard about. Oh, no. they're they're like rending their their clothes and gnashing their teeth and and crying yeah. in the streets about it. I mean, wouldn't you if you realized you'd made such a horrible mistake? Jesus, Tom. <laughs> Where'd this come from? <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be nice here. I just read something and it upset him. <laughs> yeah. It's wow. funny you say that. I just um, I just got the blade chill rend in Skyrim. So, What's that? Seems, it's just a... Uh, it's one of the highest powered blades in the game. So. Oh. What what level are you on? Like what what like level is your character? I'm probably at like twenty right now. Okay. I I'm imagining I, I that to... you have been steadily working at this since the game came out in 2011. <laughs> and I'm only at twenty. <laughs> I get on there once a year to kill one wolf. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I start a new one every so often. Um, yeah, but I'm, no, the the homeless people are just you know run of the mill. They're they're quite nude here. I find. Is that because nude? of the warm weather? You can only assume. It could also be from the lax spirits of all Californian citizens. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sexier here. Oh god. <laughs> yep. Sexy homeless people. Yep. <laughs> Sexiest homeless people in the country. That's They're uh... keeping it tight here. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry to everyone who I've hurt. <laughs> um, how, how was work? How was work today? Oh, it was... It was slow and, uh... Mm. You know, 
just love to sit there and read a book. I like those days. That's not bad. Well, I, I will say it's not it's not so easy to read a book there because then every time someone approaches, they're like, "What are you reading?" Oh, you have to be like, "Oh, I'm reading a book called The Savage God: A Study of Suicide." It doesn't make for, <laughs> doesn't make for fun conversation. <laughs> You just need to tell them, I can't. I, I can't read. Yeah. I'm, I'm practicing how I'll look when I finally learn. <laughs> this is an aesthetic book. Yeah. You work at a bookstore or something? Um, no, I make coffee for rich people. Oh, at a cafe. same thing, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Will you give Will you give me coffee tips? I'm trying. I'm gonna. I decided I'm gonna actually learn some stuff about coffee. Is that obnoxious to ask someone who who has to do it for work? <laughs> um, maybe, but it's me and you're you, so true. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so you'll tolerate it. <laughs> yeah. No, I would be fine with anyone asking me that, unless they were someone who wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Good to know. What's everyone reading right now? Uh, I'm reading uh, a book called Red Plenty by uh, Francis Bufford, which uh, mm. it's uh, about Soviet economic planning. So, mm. yeah. Is it about a specific era or is it kind of like a survey? It's a novel about... Um, oh, oh, it's a novel. About mathematicians and economists trying to... Uh, basically make it so that the soviets were out producing the united states but uh they failed so mm. yeah sounds Spoiler interesting alert. i was i was gonna guess it was a, a book about my period oh <laughs> <laughs> good times uh, next <laughs> um i am <laughs> i'm finally rereading assassin's apprentice which is very high level, but um, I'm I'm slogging through it, trying to make it through again. No, it, it's a it's a it's a fantasy book, and mm -hmm. I've been kind of in a a little bit of a nostalgia mode, looking for comfort. So I'm going back to reading um, some old comics and some old um, fantasy and sci-fi that I have already read. Like I I want to reread Hyperion again. <laughs> Um, or next, I should say. That's that's the next one on my list. But Assassin's Apprentice for right now. Um, but I don't what? think any of you guys are fantasy geeks, right? No. Yeah. They read the books really. in Skyrim. That's that's. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, the Argonian go. made version four. No, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not like that. It's not <laughs> like that. <laughs> What what is it about then? Like what is it, other than the Assassin's Apprentice? What <laughs> um, it's it's a uh, how do I explain it? The main character is um, kind of just like a like an everyman thrown into a wacky situation, like many protagonists are, um, and he's got kind of like a psychic ability, I suppose, to communicate with other beings and stuff i don't know it sounds really stupid that i'm you know summarizing it but every um, fantasy novel kind of sounds stupid when you describe it yeah it? yeah mm -hmm. most of them do or just like inscrutable like why would you even be interested in like a bunch of people doing that um but no it's it's really charming the 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 main character this this writer has written a bunch of trilogies kind of like in various parts of this same universe and this one is is my favorite this one uh, and the golden fool trilogy are are closely related and I, they're they're both really good yeah there's they're just uh there's there's a lot of heart to them you get uh, okay. you get invested <laughs> True. in the characters they're very interesting and sweet mm-hmm that's all I got. Tom, are you reading anything? Nope, I'm not reading anything right now. I'm just playing XCOM and listening to comedy podcasts. All <laughs> yeah, I was going <laughs> to say I would be shocked if you were because you are just consuming other media like two to three things at a time all the time. <laughs> so I don't even know how you could read if you were doing that. Yeah, she walked in on me once. I was playing a game 
and then uh you know she wanted to talk to me so i like paused it and i think she wanted me to look something up or whatever so i like alt tabbed out to my browser and she there was like a stream of the same game i was just playing someone else was playing it on a stream <laughs> that i was listening to she was like are you listening to a stream of someone playing this game that you're also playing and yeah and yes, there was also another like you had a stream going at the same time as a comedy podcast but you had one on mute and you would like tab between them yeah or was it a crypto thing yeah well one of them was yeah i don't know there's three topics with you games yeah. crypto comedy so mm-hmm. it was one of those two it was two of those three yeah sure yeah I love work from home, man. <laughs> yeah, you you had uh, your other job open in the other window too, or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I try not to talk to him while he's working, and I I try not to bug him or anything. But really, he's doing like eight other things anyway. <laughs> that yeah, are, sure. Like he's not focusing anyway. <laughs> yeah, and okay. so Sid, so, so how is the suicide book? Um, I only just started, and it is good so far. It's written um, by a, an English poet and critic, of course. Who else? Um, mm-hmm. And it's the very beginning of it is actually like it's all about Sylvia Plath for the first like ten pages because the author knew her mm-hmm. in like the the year of and the year before her her suicide. Um, and then it start. It's just now starting to get into historically um social attitudes about suicide so i find it quite interesting there even up until like the 1970s people were being um you know held criminally liable for suicide attempts oh really particularly in i think the last case was in the isle of man Um, so is it mostly focused on uk um yeah so far okay. i don't okay. think and i and i think it might continue to be um but it, you know it's talking now about this what what happened like during the reign of the sun king and and I, oh. it's very interesting okay so it's like a yeah. survey historical survey about attitudes towards suicide yeah in this section but there's also okay. i think it gets into like some first person that's shit. interesting yeah yeah is there any time or place where they thought suicide was cool? You well, mean now. other than now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah, yeah. Um, gotcha. No, which I actually feel... I guess I'm kind of surprised by that. Not that I... I don't think suicide is cool, but I think, like, there's something... <laughs> this is just... It's going to sound horrible. There's something magical about it, I think, like... There has to be some sort of, you get overtaken by something that leads you to do that mm. um, in a way that, I, well, I guess that's what this book is talking about. Um, like what yeah. what leads someone to, right. to that point? Right. Mm. It's not always just psychosis, you know? Yeah. Um, which I think is interesting that you can be of relatively sound mind and also choose to kill yourself yeah Perhaps yeah i mean only a, the a lot of things among us choose. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> um no that's that is interesting i it, it as much as it's not quite so taboo as it has been in the past i obviously there are still you know people people want to be like reverent about people who have passed and they don't want to be disrespectful but sometimes that leads to you know not really talking about it as Mm. much at least when it comes to like we all talk about it when it comes to celebrities or something like that but uh when it comes to like personal like people who we know um or you know uh, someone in the family or something like that you just kind of I don't know, at least for me, sometimes I get I just kind of shut down because I don't feel like it's my place to talk about it but you know, that leads to a lot of uh, misconception and misunderstanding, too. Yeah, and I, I also find it very interesting how even, like, someone I find... I would consider myself someone who, like, has thought about death 
more, <laughs> I'm someone who's thought about death, yeah. um, yeah. unlike everyone else. <laughs> um, I think about it a lot, and I've like you know taught it in literature and studied it and world religions and how they deal with like funerary rites and and even despite all of that i still when i hear someone has made a, a suicide attempt and my first thought is like what an attention seeking fucking goblin oh wow <laughs> isn't that yeah. horrible and i and i and yet like i at the same time am i, I don't know it's just a very weird thing that i immediately go to like isn't this has to be for attention that- yeah how that kind of like if they succeed you don't really think that but if they right. attempt it and fail then that's that's your thought you know at least for exactly me, kind of the way it goes like if they succeed it's like all right they were serious about it you know right it, but if it you know and it, these things it's not really in your hands i think if you attempt it you're you're trying pretty hard right so like it's just kind of hard to do it i guess well yeah. no i mean it, it there is a reason that we think that some of them are more you know geared at um attention getting and and like the theatrics of it and they're not actually like a a real full-hearted attempt at it but that's true but so what like if the person is in enough distress to do that that's also bad right like that's yeah, not, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, no, no healthy person is going to do that. Even if it's like out of like a weird grandiosity or something, that's still bad. Like they shouldn't right. be experiencing mm-hmm. that. So it seems, I mean, it's self-indulgent in the extreme. And yeah, as you I know, agree. I I have no tolerance for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's, you know, speaking of easy or hard to to kill yourself this book uh suggests <laughs> that sylvia plath's suicide was actually not serious she was not yeah. trying to actually kill herself which i didn't know huh. she just um, thought the oven smelled good or something <laughs> well she had set up all of these safeguards that failed you know she oh. she had looked into what time her downstairs neighbor awoke and she had oh, called wow. upon an au pair to come by uh, around the time that she would have just passed out from the fumes, but the wow. fumes seep, seeped down to the the bedroom, which was right beneath her kitchen, of the neighbor who then was passed out from the fumes and was Holy unable to shit. wake up. And then the au pair, because the neighbor wasn't up to hear the au pair knocking, you know, left and didn't interview. Wow. It's, it's, and she had left a note that said, call my doctor and a phone number. Wow. Um, wow. I didn't know any of that. So it's, it's, and she had, you know, that was her third or so suicide attempt and the others had been very carefully planned to not have been wow. repeated. So, um, that's, that's the author's take, which hmm. I think so, is interesting. Sylvia Sad. Plath, attention seeking bitch, huh? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Man, can you imagine, I don't know, like... <sighs> Uh, speaking of grandiosity and attention seeking, putting the other people through that. Oh, horrible. Find Putting someone else in the position of being forced to take on someone else's suicide attempt. That's pretty hideous. It is. It is. Wow. Yeah. Well, glad she's gone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, sorry. I don't know. Yeah, like making the ghost jokes like of, that. <laughs> the ghost of Sylvia Plath just like hanging around being like, God damn it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All yeah. that work for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Sid, would you uh, call hip hop the poetry of the streets? <laughs> <laughs> you know, having taught several introduction to poetry classes. Um, that is always the very first thing that I say <laughs> to my students. I put I put Tupac lyrics up on the uh, board, and I say Shakespeare or someone a little more recent, and I make them guess, and they're always surprised. You read Tupac lyrics in the style of Shakespeare, and then you rap to Shakespeare. <laughs> Interesting, oh, yeah. isn't it, students? I believe it. Yeah. I want to hear you trying to rap Shakespeare, Tom. I'm not saying right now. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I will ask for this again later. 
All right, well, I was about to jump into it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, but Tupac's raps were all written in iambic pentameter. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, you be the judge. <laughs> I'm not a big Tupac fan. I never really liked his music that much. I don't think I've ever heard a single Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> California Love is that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're they're piping that into the streets here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I had a wigger phase. So oh <laughs> Jesus, oh my god! <laughs> All of my brothers did too, um, but they really they're were still more... in them. <laughs> and <they're... laughs> that's one way of thinking about it. They were really more. Um, Lil Wayne, if you will. Uh, Lil Wayne's good. I well, like, in I the late like 90s, I think, yeah. He wasn't around in the late 90s. Yeah, well, that's I when guess he started, right? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I think of him as like early 2000s, mid 2000s. That's when he blew up, but he had. Yeah, that's probably true. CDs out of the back of the car, not to be racist. <laughs> <laughs> when did Dedication 2 come out? 2006. <laughs> So that that's kind of peak Lil Wayne. Yeah, I agree. In my opinion. I feel bad, but sometimes when people say his name, instead of thinking of anything else, I think about the picture where he's holding a guitar really ineptly and he just <laughs> is like staring slack jawed ahead. <laughs> and I was like, man, why is that the mental image that I have of Lil Wayne? I don't know. I'm an asshole. That's a striking it's hard image. for you. It's hard for you to uh, accept that a black man could be so gifted at any <laughs> instrument he picks up. Yeah. He was terrible at guitar. <laughs> no, he's the black super tramp, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Blooper tramp. <laughs> yeah. I think that was when he was also at his like peak of codeine consumption. Yeah, you know, it was. He was just completely yeah. whacked out. I, I think he was just like, I'm going to play guitar and like didn't try to learn. Yeah, but he just was like, you know, you just pick it up and play it, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like seeing that man on a skateboard, <laughs> pants just at his thighs. Just I've shocking. never seen this. I think there's one video of him like just beefing it that is beautiful. <laughs> I wonder if he was just so good at like rapping like naturally that he just doesn't think that you have to like learn things you just do them and it <laughs> yeah. works out so it's just like he keeps trying these things well he also probably at that point had a bunch of yes men around him just yeah. you know not not disabusing him of anything being like yeah of course you can play guitar <laughs> you don't have to learn yeah that whole uh like Birdman scene is very hey. strange. Like they're all very weird. So I'm yeah. pretty jealous right now. <laughs> oh yeah. So Tom, what were one of the scandals that you wanted to talk about? Uh, Fish McMuffin. <laughs> I thought you meant Birdman. Uh, no. Oh, like a Birdman scandal? I I, I no. don't know. All right, Mick scandal. Let's go. What is Gabby, a fish McMuffin? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Gabby. Oh, Gabby Potato. Yeah. And Brian Laundry. I don't know. I haven't even really been following this. I just like saying Gabby Potato. So, yeah. That's the I extent don't. of it? Pretty much. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I watched a little bit of the dash cam footage. Or rather, I heard some of the footage on a podcast I was listening to. And uh, she... I mean, she seemed really upset, but she also seemed like a really daffy lady, you know, just sort of. What does that mean? Well, the cop asks her, like, are you OK? And so she's upset. I understand that she's like distressed, but she the, her response, she just starts going on and on about like vibes and like how she was <laughs> going to start like some kind of like wellness store and how she's like a van life influencer and stuff like she just kept going on and on in response to like a three word question <laughs> um hmm. they yeah must i don't taking adderall don't on the road to stay oh away. <laughs> i guess I she's, she was ocd she said she was like ocd and stuff so i don't know if that has anything i didn't to do watch i i didn't follow this at all so i have no 
educated opinions here or well no opinions at all educated or otherwise yeah like i'm not really paying attention to it i guess the the guy now is like posting weird stuff on his instagram or something like oh good that's what you want to do in the middle of an investigation yeah they both seem just like really dumb weird people Hmm. well he's been missing he hasn't been oh i remember i I actually listened to for some reason a podcast about this before her body was found um, oh. and he, the guy had posted some i mean to me it sounded like his last instagram post was some sort of libertarian yeah. call to action or something yeah. what the hell <laughs> um but yeah he's been missing since then which is honestly is so incredible they just let him go the cops are yeah. just like eh, it's fine <laughs> nothing to see here and now Dog the Bounty Hunter is uh, oh, yeah. telling people he's going to find Brian <laughs> Laundry, which is like, uh, you know, I hope he does. Thought. I hope yeah, he does. Me too. me too. He's on um, a redemption quest now after he got caught saying the N-word or whatever. Oh, is that what happened? I think so. Yeah, it was something like... Uh, yeah, I think I think he there was like a phone conversation he had with someone and the person recorded it or some somehow like a recording of it got out and it was him saying um, like I'm not racist but sometimes this word gets used around here and da 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 like it was it was a odd I, I don't really know the context of why why he was saying that or something but it it was funny because he was like I'm I don't want to risk my career over this stupid word or <laughs> by, something it's like, by well, saying beep yeah yeah pretty, <laughs> yeah pretty much exactly that so. <laughs> oh boy he's mm-hmm. just hulk hogan to me yeah. yeah like they're the same person in my mind <laughs> he got in trouble for similar stuff didn't he exactly yeah. oh man wow is is dog the bounty hunter from florida oh, he's i mean in spiritually Hawaii, I he's got <laughs> like he's the <laughs> ultimate florida man that's no, why i, I was asking from... but he's hawaiian yeah, I think they're. Well, I mean, he's not Hawaiian, but I, think I don't that's mean where ethnically. <laughs> Dog the bounty hunter playing be... ukulele. <laughs> Somewhere. Uh, yeah, he. Um, I think he's. I think he's white. <laughs> that's <laughs> not what I was fucking asking. <laughs> but he's doing the haka. You know, he does that now. <laughs> that is something else. Scare you people into submission. It is scary. In a respectful way. In a really respectful way, it's scary. <laughs> do not come for me. I find it so like cringy that people do that at like sports stuff and whatnot now. It's just like, come on, this isn't you know, maybe this worked when it was like some sort of I don't know, like tribal battle or something. Like people appearing out of the trees or something doing that, but you're just like <laughs> Okay, time for our haka performance, you know, on a football field. I think field. it's cool. It looks cool. It's a little silly. I, it, the thing itself is, like, it's fine. It's just the way that it's, uh, it's so, um, I don't really know. It's just it's just people that just do it all the time now. It's like a thing. Some teams, it's like their thing to do. And the other team just, like, stands there and, like, <laughs> looks at them while they do it. It's just kind of weird. Yeah, it's the I mean, ultimate own. I, I think that's how it works, right? I mean, I, I really don't know. I, I shouldn't even, like, I, I have never looked it up, like, what the historical context was. But I think that's what it was, that it was, like, a like a ritualized form of the battle so that, like, part of it happens that way as opposed to, like, a bunch of murder happening, you oh, know, on the cool. battlefield. Yeah. I like all those types of things. So that, yeah. that elevates it in, yeah. in my mind. I mean, I guess you can say, you can argue that's trivialized by adapting it into a sports context, but I don't know, that's, it seems appropriate for the contemporary world. We're not having those types of battles anymore, so. Sure. I mean, that's kind of sports. Right, right, exactly. Any of these things where it's like, if you imitated it, like, it, mocking it is exactly the same as doing it sincerely that that always kind of <laughs> makes me like feel weird about things because it's just based on how people respond to it and the way people respond to it is just kind of waiting for them to finish and then they, <laughs> then they start the game yeah. i know that's kind of weird well i mean maybe it seems that way to us because we don't know what they mean but each haka has a like a different significance like it's not the same one every time yeah um 
Because, like, I've seen stuff where they do it at weddings, too. And, and the significance of that is, like, they're telling... They're, Scaring the bride? <laughs> you better no, do. it is. It's, like, it's <laughs> talking about, like, a new life for, for the couple and, like, wanting them to, you know, succeed on their own merits and stuff like that. Like, someone leaving the nest kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it can be very touching. But, of course, to me, like, without reading that about it, it just looks like a, any other haka, too, you know? So... Yeah then it's like, okay, well, why are they doing that here? <laughs> yeah. But so, I, you know, I think if you know, like, what they're saying and what the significance is, it probably makes it a lot more poignant. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. Like, having to pretend like it doesn't just look like people going like, like, it, like that's just what it looks like to me. I don't know anything about this. So, like, it's weird that, like, we're supposed to all be now have a different context for it without any education without this becoming some part of our culture in like a real way it's just like all of a sudden now it's like a a thing that no one really knows how to how we're supposed to act about it or whatever well kiwis do do they (laughs) yeah like white ones i think most most do i mean they probably have some shitty attitudes about it because that's how those things usually go but yeah i mean i think they have more context than yeah than we do as americans right uh yeah we'll we'll ask freddie about that i guess okay Uh, ask him to perform one for us maybe (laughs) and tom what are you watching that you're like inundated by haka like are they like (laughs) like, what the fuck is going on over there (laughs) some teams they do that every game you know i know but like is this like are you watching like australian rugby you know i know literally yeah i guess it's those those teams like some of those teams do that but you don't watch that (laughs) yeah i know i'm just talking (laughs) okay i was watching a dodgers game and all of a sudden everyone was erupting into a haka (laughs) that would make as much sense honestly that that's like not (laughs) any weirder to me oh my god I'm Tom, going this to is become a boomer a attitude. Scholar. <laughs> You're complaining about shit that you don't even like look at or see. That's boomer. Uh, That's his right yeah. as a man. Okay? Thank you. It is. I mean, it probably was all made up in the 80s or something. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're done. Yeah. You're canceled for that. <laughs> well, I mean, all that stuff. Just, you know, that would people, be a hilarious uh, thing to make up too. Like that, yeah. Like, okay, this is a thing we're gonna pretend that people used to do. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. in, in one of the Fast and Furious movies, they have like a long sequence involving it, or like two of them, I think, maybe involved. Oh yeah, it now. really? Yeah, I don't know. So maybe that's what I don't know. Um, how, how many like Maori are there in the world? <laughs> Does anyone know? Like, roughly? yeah, I know. I know off the top of my head. I don't know. I Just mean, if it. anyone would. I think I <laughs> that's that true. <laughs> I would come to you for that. Sure. Uh, eight hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. Okay. Well, sometimes small groups of people have oversized influence in the entertainment. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I don't know what you mean, and I don't agree. <laughs> okay. I, I was gonna say like, yeah. Well, I guess I know what like Passover is and stuff. So this whatever. Oh, <laughs> Uh, um is is haka specifically maori or is it like do other polynesian cultures have haka too like samoans and stuff like that yeah wikipedia says maori only okay Samoans have something though i think i don't know they have a like like a similar type of ritual yeah because because the rock's not maori is he samoan or something i I think well what is i don't know isn't he like just a, a big melting pot isn't he a mix yeah, but he's, I don't think you can he, say that he, anymore. He he like <laughs> leads it, the dance in the in one of the movies. So um, wait, I is he that... wait? The Rock is in the Fast and Furious movies. Yeah, in the, what? In, like the newer ones. Yeah. Oh I, wow! Isn't yeah. isn't it the other ethnically ambiguous Vin large Diesel? guy? Yeah, you can't yeah. put Vin Diesel and The Rock in the same movie. That's Vin Diesel in it. Yeah, no, The Rock plays like some defense intelligence agency guy or something like that I don't who know. does the I haka exactly. what <laughs> I don't know. he gets like sec- <laughs> like they do like a thing where like it's like a siege on his island or something like that or whatever and like uh and it's just it's taken from seven like seven samurai and all that those movies so oh my gosh yeah 
Wow. They really lost the plot on that franchise, huh? <laughs> I've never seen any getting, of them, so it's all are new they getting to all me. those cars to an island? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, he is half, his mother is Samoan. I just looked it up, so you're right. That's cheating. You should just say answers and hope you're right. (laughs) Like everyone else. Like how we got like half the facts of the last three stories we talked about. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good for me. (laughs) Usually guessing. Sure. Oh, wow. I just got an email from my dad with the subject. If your beans feel like this, don't eat them, <laughs> experts warn. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Dad. That's good. Well, what is, uh, it? What is the... I'm not opening anything that he says. <laughs> <laughs> it's a threat. Hawkeying <laughs> <Yep. laughs> my dad. <laughs> evil emails. <laughs> <laughs> that would work so well. <laughs> so, uh, Tabs, you were going to book some tickets on air or something like that. That was. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I have to. I have to open tour. Um, and then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're we're buying uh, airline tickets on the dark web, so we don't get targeted advertising. <laughs> yeah, we're flying. It's only... it's, oh man, no! I I had a terrible joke. I'm not going to say it. I'm sorry. I was going to make up a a later. Yes, I'll tell you. Only you. (laughs) What's the airline name? What are we flying? Uh, Probably Southwest. (laughs) That's the the (laughs) only airline on the dark web. (laughs) Oh, I get it. (laughs) What? What do you get? It's not like a, is that an fun. Epstein joke or something? No. No. Oh. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Tom tapping the side of his nose and looking at me knowingly. <laughs> what? No, nothing. <laughs> um. <laughs> Whatever happened to that guy, anyways? <laughs> they named a disease after him, I think. <laughs> Pedophilia is renamed Jeffrey Epstein disease. <laughs> that's what that's what Epstein Barr actually is. It's just pedophilia. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You're gonna anger the EBV people. Well, come at me. I don't know any of them, so they seem weak to me. I can almost guarantee that you do. <laughs> oh yeah? They're lurking around in the shadows. <laughs> um No, I I am curious about the the airfare though because i i haven't flown since uh since covid and i don't have any plans to but um you know we do want to visit you at some point Sid. we want to come and take over your house so that'd be great i don't think i have enough uh time to take off of work that i could drive (laughs) to los angeles from chicago (laughs) (laughs) um so i think we'll have to to suck it up and by it i mean that recycled covid air yeah, uh, prices are really just back to normal. In my really? Experience. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, Where? I made a vow um, to not fly for hopefully forever, though I know that's not realistic. But I just <laughs> that's I what God f- intended for humans. Yeah. Yeah, we're not meant to be up there. That's what. That's why Sid is going horseback everywhere now. <laughs> that's right on Shadow Mirror. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's my haunted horse in Skyrim. <laughs> I was like, oh man, she's been playing Skyrim recently. I, yeah, I resisted I asking this first time you you mentioned Skyrim, but now I, I can't. Uh, do you play with any mods when you play Skyrim or <laughs> you just play on console? No, no, I don't. Wow. Cause I don't even, I don't even know what that, I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> there is no game that Tom plays without hundreds of mods i think that is a form of cheating no uh, no i can makes barely it stomach dlc honestly wow <laughs> <laughs> if you play skyrim without mods it's uh, i kind of like it it's not it's like you're not really playing skyrim to me that's like it's not i'm gonna let you have that opinion but i'm gonna disagree okay. and i'm calm ab- i'm calm about everything being said right now <laughs> I'm on my first playthrough of uh, Skyrim, really, like, my first, like, time oh, yeah? actually, like, 
I think I'm on like level 25 now or something like that. So, oh, and wow. uh, I don't know. I uh, it's fun. I don't know. I'm playing like a summoner guy, and uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting. I don't know. It's it's uh, I, I'm I have to learn all the little quirks and stuff like how to make potions and all those things and. I don't know, I'm working through it. I don't know. I built like a house and built all the shrines in it, except for like two or three. And uh, You really yeah. buried the lead on this, Don. <laughs> we should have been talking about this the whole fucking time. <laughs> yeah. Erase but... everything. Let's start over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What race are you playing as? Imperial. That is so messed up. Not Breton, <laughs> you know? I mean, no. God. come on now. <laughs> I'm playing Imperial, uh, um, and I'm I'm on the side of the Stormcloaks. So wow, that's yeah. uh, very left problematic. Of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? Uh, you doing some two-handed, one-handed? Um, I've got a sword. I use one-handed. I guess. Wow. Wow. And. Uh, I don't know. I just I, all I do is the summon the Atronox, whatever they're called, and then just uh, get them to fight for me. So most of the time, that's and just, brilliant. I'm not really good at the actual mechanics of playing games, so I just I have it I set to very there. easy, and uh, I just uh, hack and slash at things, <laughs> press all the buttons and stuff. So, you know. I don't know. Don's favorite character is the courier that just pops up randomly and gives you letters <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're nice i like to kill them and then loot the note that they were passing along to me. <laughs> oh, really? I, see i always like to follow the law in the games <laughs> i don't i don't like, me too uh, cause problems i don't know but like i don't not really understand about like stealing stuff and all that kind of thing i never really do that i don't know like do you pickpocket at all do anything like that or <laughs> I definitely steal a lot. I don't do a lot of pickpocketing, but I steal and I lockpick. Um, the I was actually just thinking the other day, there, the there's a really robust punishment system in Skyrim, and it's really specific. And it and I mean they they the longer you're in jail, which is crime dependent, obviously, like the more skills you can lose, and then. Obviously, you lose all your stolen goods, and it's like there's all these consequences that, to me, I understand that you want to, like, world build everything, but who the fuck is playing Skyrim and then allowing themselves to go sit in jail? Mm -hmm. People yeah. who are interested like, in is a anyone... deep critique of late capitalism, obviously. <laughs> Just, it's <laughs> like, is anyone really doing that? Like, I'm immediately restoring from another mm. save point. Like, I, I'm not doing that so yeah i don't know who is but it's very interesting to me mm -hmm. so are you are you playing like as imperial or like on the side of empire or what i actually haven't chosen a side yet um because it always stresses me out <laughs> instead <laughs> of having an you know 50 percent of the people i encounter be hostile to me i just wait until the very last possible moment <laughs> mm -hmm. that's a good good tactic yeah you know in real life too. too i'm a diplomat through and through <laughs> is do you usually tell me if i'm saying this wrong do you usually play as khajiit i do um i'm actually taking i've taken over a character that ryan made uh. and i believe it's a high elf or something mm -hmm. so that's my first time playing as a Ryan, what's your um, elf? Roland Martin. That's not what I'm asking. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a, like a high elf or it's something. A it's a Bosmer, he says. Oh, wood elf. Okay. <laughs> wood elf, wood elf. Yeah, he's ugly as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're messed up looking. Did you know the chickens count as witnesses for crimes? If it's you true. If you murder someone in front of a chicken, then that counts as someone witnessing it. Yeah, and you can't kill any farm animals either, which I think is so messed up. Well, you can't just run around killing people's chickens, I mean. I know, but you shouldn't... Ha the penalty is steep. There's only like six chickens in the whole world, I mean. <laughs> no, that's not true. I alone have three at my house. All right. Chicken hoarder. Is that the, right. the Lakeview Manor, whatever? Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, it I've is. got that... 
it, what, uh, how many houses are there in the games? There's three, or there's Breeze Home, there's that, and then there's like the one. There's one. In isn't Marcus. there one in Solitude. each city? Oh, really? You can. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think there's one in each. Oh, city. I didn't know that. And then there's like a DLC that has a, its own like castle. Yeah, that's Lake View. Um, you have to build everything yourself with Lake View Manor. And uh, another glitch, I guess, of the game is that because you build it yourself, it doesn't ever show up as a house that you own. Oh, really? Like in the stats, yeah. But I just got my wife to go live there after much ado. She really wanted to stay and run her brother's shop, but I uh, I forced her into it. So I never mm-hmm. got married in these games or whatever. It just seems like ridiculous. Well, some of us value <laughs> romance. <okay? laughs> yeah. Also, you get like a hundred gold a day from them. Oh yeah. So if you if you go back after like you know three months of gameplay in game, you know you get like an ass load of money. Hmm. Hmm. So they're making a new game called Starfield, which kind of looks good, possibly. It's like a. It's not Elder Scrolls though, right? No, it's a it's a totally like new, like World. universe. Yeah. Yeah. It's is a, it Bethesda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same wow. people that made you know all this Skyrim and all that stuff, and uh, it's like sci-fi. Looks Damn. looks pretty cool. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, there's been like a trailer I think came out, and they've got some screenshots, but no release. Kind of looks like Fallout. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit. It, I'm looking at a still. Yeah, I, I don't think it's like po- post-apocalyptic or anything like that. Hmm. Are you gonna get it? Probably, yeah. I don't know. We'll we'll see when it comes out. Cyberpunk was kind of a mess, so now I'm like very oh, hesitant yeah. to like just buy these games when they get released. Did they make anything right with that? A lot of people got shafted, right? I, th- I think it's just getting worse. Like they patch it, and it just <laughs> makes things worse. And like the head designer <laughs> quit, and it's just like, <gasps> oh no, a big it's... mess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would probably quit too, out of humiliation. Well, th- I mean, what was the issue there? That they were trying to um, pack too much, like they were guaranteeing, well not guaranteeing, they would advertise something as the game is going to be like this, and it would take a lot more time for that to actually be true, so then they just released it with like bar- very bare bones, with the intention right. of kind of like uh, patching it as 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 time went on is that I, I, what happened? yeah essentially like it, it was definitely rushed um it was very ambitious and uh, yeah. i think a lot of the like pre-release stuff was was pretty misleading the game yeah. itself like you know it was a fine thing to play through like it was okay but it wasn't like worth the millions of dollars that they were you know just i think it was like the most expensive uh, like marketing campaign a game has ever had it was just enormous and now it's but it was I, all over promised yeah and a, a lot of people like could barely play it because it was just mm-hmm. such a mess so uh, yeah I, I think they really messed that up mm. yeah i was playing it on ps4 and other than the load times and stuff and how bad that was like uh i don't know i enjoyed it it was kind of fun but the thing is i hadn't played video games really for years until like two years ago or so, something like that. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm still catching up to like, you know, like Skyrim, I still think that the graphics are amazing and stuff like that, you know, like, and it's like a 10 year old game or something like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I was still amazed at, you know, like uh, in cyberpunk, it's like a major like city and stuff. And you're walking around, there's people around you speaking Japanese and all this stuff. And it's like, that was really cool to me. But like, I can understand if you like bought a new computer and like, we're trying to, make it, you know, really, and then spent like 80 bucks on the game or something like that, you know, and are got everything all set up and then it's like crashing and stuff and yeah, just uh, annoying, then I can get why that would be annoying. So, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the world is cool. Like the, the city, just walking around it is really impressive and they did that really well. But like the rest of the game is just really flat and, and kind of boring. Like the quest and like skyrim or oblivion the you know the older ones were even better but even in skyrim like there's at least something interesting going on with a a lot of them it's not just like 
you have to go here and then kill this guy or go here and talk to this person. And then it's just like that over and over again. It's just like, there's nothing sure. really, mm. you know, interesting yeah. to do. Mm-hmm. But c- cyberpunk wasn't Bethesda. It was CD project. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. Okay. But a similar style of game. So like yeah, yeah, open yeah. world RPG. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, uh, so about nine years ago, that viral rat guy died, whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Benghazi. And, uh, I was, I remembered the, the other day that like, uh, what he would do is, uh, he was, he used to live in Baghdad in the green zone and, um, he used to post a lot about how, uh, what he would do. He was like, did like secure communications for VIP and stuff like that kind of thing. That was his like job. But because of what that job entails is like 95%, uh, you know, just sitting around because like only 5% of the time you actually have to like, you know, put together the microphones and all that kind of stuff, whatever, get the secure stuff set up for like Colin Powell or something like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, he told us that like what he would do is he had like a PS2 with him and he would just play, I don't know, it was some RPG, probably like Final Fantasy, one of those ones, whatever. And, uh, he had like a few memory cards with him. And what he would do is play those games until he had a perfect completion. Like he mm-hmm. had done every quest and every side quest and every mm-hmm. like special achievement and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And fill all the memory cards with that. And then he would delete them and then start again doing that process. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's what he did for, uh, I don't know, before... Uh, you know, to defend freedom or whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> that's why they killed him. Before, before Hillary Clinton killed him. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I, uh, I I thought that was like a, I don't know, it's, it's a good use of, you know, getting paid probably like easy six figures or whatever, you know, kind of thing. Whatever. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So Fish McMuffin, what do we think? What is it? What the fuck is that? <laughs> it is. Just do you know what a McMuffin is? An egg McMuffin? Uh, I guess. So. Is it a biscuit? Or is no, it it's a, a English McMuffin. McMuffin? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's proprietary McMuffin <laughs> materials. But it, yeah. is this real? Or is it something yeah, that someone well, made up? Yeah, it's in the Discord Tom? right now. I'm just staring at it. <laughs> Stop looking at it. You're upsetting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. The fish and egg McMuffin is a little weird. What? See, that's not. Re- I'm googling it. Okay, it's not real. It's a. It's a meme. Yeah. It also says It was like specifically designed to upset me. Seven dollars for this thing. You know well, they're not cheap. Yeah. The the even the fish fillet is uh or like what is that it fillet of fish at McDonald's yeah. is not is not cheap. They're usually about five bucks, right? Uh, yeah. Breakfast meal there is now like nine bucks. Jeez, Louise. Huh. It's, it honestly is kind of upsetting. I, Fast food I know uh, it's no longer cheap. I, I know that like a bunch of like Muslims like the fish stuff at McDonald's because it's like you don't have to have it be halal, like slaughter or whatever if it's fish. Mm. So I wonder if they're going crazy about this. <laughs> you wonder if they're chimping out? Yeah, I wonder if they're chimping <laughs> out about the, the fish McMuffin. <laughs> well, as I said, it's not real. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seemed seemed suspect. I don't know. It doesn't really seem like a like a breakfast food someone would make. I don't know that I've ever had a fillet of fish. You know, the Wendy's cod fish during Lent is pretty good. Yeah, i i went uh, I went bonkers during Lent. I tried so many of the different fast food fish sandwiches, and they're pretty decent. Most of them are are pleasant to eat. Um, I think. I tried, uh, let's see, I've had Culver's, Wendy's, Burger King, um, Popeye's. Popeye's has fish? Oh, I guess they do have fish, yeah. Uh, well, during, during Lent, yeah. They had, like, a fish sandwich. Um, yeah, I don't know, Tom, did I try any others? Arby's? Did Arby's have one? Oh, uh, yes, Arby's did, too. It wasn't as good as their... Last last summer, they had a beer battered fish sandwich that was awesome. That's like the best. That's probably one of the best food sandwiches I've ever had. Period. Not just out of the fish sandwiches. Um, 
and their their one uh, for Lent wasn't quite as good, but it was fine. A lot of young people these days, uh, you know, they post the the TikToks that are like, "Who is eating at Arby's?" And it's just <laughs> me, I think. I guess in you. Yeah. What do you Arby's mean? is yeah. good. Arby's Dude, is good. Yeah. Yeah, Arby's is good. But people don't. I... Kids, the young people, they don't like it. Oh man, Arby's. Arby's is great. They, uh, they have a more expansive menu than most fast food places. Like they, mm-hmm. they have those like gyro sandwiches, and um, in addition to barbecue. Their... Yeah, they've got a lot of things. Everything's They're... good. It's all good. I mean, the the roast beef is probably the weakest part, honestly. The other stuff is is where it's at. They have a great chicken salad sandwich. Yeah, yeah, that one is good. Do they do tacos, or am I thinking of Jack in the Box? Jack in the Box. box. Which I've never had. I've never had. Oh my god, that was like a big part of my childhood. Really? Because you would get like a sack of like... You know, twenty tacos for like Whoa. five bucks, and it's what? it's really it's. <laughs> I remember the flavor of it in like it's good in a nostalgia way. I know that I couldn't eat it now, but it's mm. like it's not really meat. It's sort of the texture of um. Is it like pasty? It is. It's like a, you know, maybe something you'd find in like a frozen bean burrito that sort yeah, of texture yeah yeah i gotcha mm-hmm. and they're really like wet and like, not wet <laughs> greasy the tacos <laughs> but there is something of value i don't know i mean i remember them fondly i wouldn't eat them now yeah did you ever have checkers or rallies oh yeah oh yeah okay that was my I, my my uh, my mom didn't really let us eat out very much when we were little, but um, when we were on vacation visiting my grandparents in Florida, that was what we were allowed to get. We got checkers, and I loved, I loved the seasoned fries, and I loved how sloppy those burgers were. It's, that's what I remember. They were the really fries. good. Oh, the fries. Yeah, the fries so were good. great. <laughs> yeah, those are really good. But yeah, I didn't have a, a lot of. Okay, wait. Where have you guys had Sonic? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Does Sonic exist in Canada, Donald? Um, I don't think so. Maybe on the west coast. Sonic. Here. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sonic. Okay. Oh, oh, you're Ocean trying to water. do the French thing. Okay. I was like, what racist voice is he trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta hit my quota, um, you know, before time. That's right. Oh, you did yeah. the Hakka stuff wasn't enough? Okay, good. All right. Um, the trans stuff counts also. <laughs> I'm racist against trans people, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there's... there's. Uh, I wish we had A&W here, the way it, like... Mm-hmm. Canadian A and W because we have A and W in the U S but it's not the it's not actually the same. Um, yeah, yeah, that that always looks really good to me. Well, they do hot dogs, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, they do Whist- do hot dogs. Whistle dogs, yeah, or something like that. <laughs> Whistle dogs. What does that mean? Yeah, you get uh, bacon, cheese, and mustard or something like that. Yeah. That doesn't sound bad. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just like the. The, the burgers with the family member names. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I don't like them because of those names. They're kind of creepy. Sure, sure. But the burgers yeah. sound good. Mm-hmm. What do you mean family member? Like dad burger, mom burger? Yeah, teen yep. burger. Hmm. Yep. D- yeah. Did you say teen with an N? Yes, I said teen That's... burger. I don't like that. I know. I don't it's know why you're condoning strange. that. <laughs> but it's, it's just, it's a good Child burger. burger. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for my evening child burger. <laughs> yeah. Infant burger. <laughs> there is a baby good. burger, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. But yeah, oh. it's, it sounds tasty. I, I would like that. Um, but it's probably good that I don't like fast food more because i would not have that much willpower to resist it (laughs) yeah oh tabs uh the other day i thought of you i saw um i was thinking well you know about the seafood stuff i don't eat seafood it just seems bizarre to me so i saw someone eating crabs or something like that like on the timeline Uh they had like 
posted some crabs and I, I just i don't know i thought i thought of you when i would just thought of how like much revulsion i had towards it kind of thing it just <laughs> it looked like it it honestly looked like as if you like went down to a pond or something and just scooped up some frogs <laughs> And they just started it had like moss biting, on it. yeah, just biting off the legs or whatever kind of thing. Like just, <laughs> I don't know, very very strange. I don't know. We're it's a weird planet. I don't know. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. They are they're strange looking creatures, um, but that doesn't stop them from being delicious. That's the thing. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it it is also weird, like. Mammals are closer in body plan to us, obviously, because we're mammals. Yeah. So the, the the strangeness is is not as obvious. But mammal burger. Um, what mammal burger? <laughs> mammal burger. <laughs> Mam- Do you remember mammal sauce? Does anyone remember mammal sauce? No. no. Okay, never mind. Moving along. Um, but the the I don't know. I think the act of you know consuming any other like animal animated creature is a little bit animated. no really i mean cause, well because i was gonna say no, living right. creature but that includes plants and that doesn't really that's not the same experience but yeah i mean it's all a little bit strange if you get abstract about it um so i try to not focus on the weirdness of of, of sea creatures <laughs> but it is Dawn, but you're I'm right you. it is weird I mean, we don't have to eat everything. No, we like, definitely people just don't. choose to eat like shrimp and like lobster, and that is beyond my comprehension. Mm-hmm. You yeah. guys are so just, strange. <laughs> it's not. I feel Tebs. I mean, you know how I eat, and you know that I have. I have a. I eat things that are good that you think are good, and yeah. I make things that you think are good. Yeah, you're a good cook. But I won't. I do not think that any sort of shellfish or any sort of shelled beast is tastes good. And yeah. I don't know how people think that. They yeah. are among my favorite things to eat. If I could never eat any terrestrial protein again and I could only eat seafood, I would be totally fine with it. I would be so happy. <sighs> They're so delicious. Yeah. D- doesn't like it's... doesn't shrimp have like the poop in it too or something? Yeah, we'll always say it that. does. All food has yeah. poop in it, Donald. Every animal has poop in them, <laughs> but not when I not the parts. They're not. It's not in contact with the parts that I'm eating. Well, no, it's yeah. not with shrimp either. If they're cleaned properly, it's the same as with a cow. If it's cleaned but properly, it was. Hmm. It was in. It was in contact. No, there's a little intestinal tract, just the same as there is in any animal, and you just remove it. <sighs> you can have this one. <laughs> when Don said he saw people eating crabs instead of eating crab, that kind of threw me for a loop a little bit. <laughs> that like changes it a little bit. Yeah, I'm, s- I'm standing by my man on this. <laughs> it should be crabs. This is a Hanafi versus Maliki kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Han- um, Hanafi Muslims don't eat shellfish and consider it haram, but other other Muslims are okay with it. Sydney Hanafi. <laughs> Sydney I'm holding Hanafi. you to that now. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Uh, I'm a Baptist. Oh, really? Just kidding. No, God. <laughs> holding you to that now. <laughs> what if Baptist meant me Bronze Age pervert, pervertist? Oh, mm. I get it. You know that mm. guy? He's pretty. Cool. Is that a guy? Sounds like a whole genre of. <laughs> <He's> a... <laughs> there are so many Bronze Age perverts out there. <laughs> Twitter. They Twitter walk among us today. <laughs> Who, apparently, he's some like scrawny Romanian nerd guy. I don't know. Leo was telling me about this. That they like doxed him and found out he's just like some grad student or whatever. Yeah. Gypsies can go to grad school. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on, you are helping Tom's quota. You don't need to do that. I'm here to support all men. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. There, it's okay. You can. I don't know. Like people get so mad at that perfume nationalist guy for being like a a fat guy. Like you can't have opinions about like beauty if you're fat. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Just watch me. I, I know, right? <laughs> I, mean, it's... I have some of the foremost opinions on beauty. No, no, I would not say his opinions are foremost in any sense. Uh, he seems pretty strange and dull, but so what? Like, like he, you just mad at like I don't know. It just seems like a way to not a genuine way to shut someone down. <laughs> just because like I disagree with you, therefore I think that you're not allowed to have your opinions because of like your weight or something like that. It just seems very strange. Especially perfume. Sometimes I do feel that way. Like, they can smell just fine. I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know obese people's olfactory receptors are just as sensitive as the rest of us? <laughs> More so because they're tuned to like hunting out food and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine your face right now. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I'm clinically obese, but you can continue to say what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. No problem so. here. I think I am. <laughs> Cheers. I'm, not, I'm Cheers. not positive. I'm at least overweight, but probably obese too. <laughs> Wishing I was more fat so I could fit in with my friends. <laughs> 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 my friends are clinically obese. I'm just overweight. <laughs> you guys want to hear a sad story about an obese person? Of course. Um, so I saw this on Reddit, I think. This guy was in Disney World with his baby, an obese person, walking out of a restaurant <laughs> holding his baby. He trips. No. And lands on the baby. And then the way that it's phrased is, and there was no scream. And then. Uh, oh my God. And then they uh, announced the death of the infant after the man was escorted off the premises of Disney World. I guess there's. A lot of uh, deaths and stuff that happen in, in these places, and uh, they have a policy of like not announcing it while they're still on the property. They wait until they're out of Disneyland so that they don't get tied up with it or something. Mm-hmm. Pausing It's a Small World to announce the death of an infant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you guys see those pictures of those like gang members? Disney, whatever, where they've got like oh yeah 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 oh yeah yeah, yeah I did and stuff yeah. Sid, have you no. been doing that a lot? Have you been going to the Disney a lot and uh, getting the jacket? <laughs> yeah, I'm a there? huge Disney buff. <laughs> yeah, um, love it there. I definitely can name Disney movies, all of them. <laughs> sure. And I can also afford to go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were gonna go to Knott's Berry Farm though, right? That I do want. I do want to go there. Is that mostly it, because there's a Portillo's over there? Ooh, wait, so yeah, like I, like the same chain that's in yeah. Chicago? Oh, yeah, huh. one of my fave places, and uh, that's the nearest one. So Knott's Berry Farm, it is nice. I've only been yeah. to Portillo's yeah. once, uh, just recently, like last month. I think. What'd you get? Did you get the right thing? I got a chili dog and uh, some kind of burger or sandwich thing. I forget. Yeah, you got Nothing some sandwich. That. I can't remember what it was, though. Yeah. Mm. It was good. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, they're just incredible. What did I... I got a... I think I got, like, their, they had a spicy chicken sandwich when when we went there, which is... I, I can't resist any time something like that is on a menu, so I got that. But, of course, usually I just get the Chicago dog, everything, no onions. I'm glad to hear that they have good regular food. Like I, yeah. I really only get the beef dip. Yeah, yeah. Um, my my mom <laughs> said that the last time she went there, they 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 do a combo thing too, where because they they have apparently I I haven't tried it, but they have good Italian sausage, uh, sa- you know, mm. like on the on the roll or whatever, like a hot dog. Um, yeah. And of course, they have the Italian beef. Um, and they also combine those where you get the the sausage nestled among the folds of beef. I'm, um, I'm fairly with... sure I've had that. <laughs> she said it was really, she, I don't even know how, she is like, she eats like a bird compared to me and that seems excessive to me. And she was like, no, it was delicious. It was amazing. Wow. <laughs> wow. Maybe she got the baby beef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They also have like the most incredible, I don't think that you, I don't know that you eat sweets anymore tabs but they have the most yeah. incredible chocolate cake 
oh yes I've ever had in my I mean, yeah it it's like it's the mayo chocolate cake excuse me yeah there's mayonnaise in their in their cakes are you fucking i don't need you to ruin my life no <laughs> it's good i They're... know that it's good i know that <laughs> But like Sid's worried mayo? about her polyunsaturated uh, fat intake, you know. I hope none of your listeners have eating disorders because they're definitely judging us. <laughs> Good. Listen to these fat fucks. Sit with it, assholes. Yeah. Sorry. Mm. I'm so sick. Of, I'm so sick of eating disorder anything. I'm just like tired of I, I don't like tiptoeing around it. I, I it's just is very stressful. Just eat normal. I can't even you dumb tweet bitch. about it. You know what I mean? I kind of feel that way, and I, I, yes, I do know what you mean, and I can't even tweet about it anymore because so yeah. many people yeah. have that. They're going to think I'm talking about them, and I am, but not specifically. <laughs> I just think it is the most, I mean, it's just beyond my comprehension in every way. I, I, the weird thing is, like, I, I don't know hardly anyone in real life who has an eating disorder. I didn't grow up around any girls who were psycho about this kind of stuff and now it's like every girl online is psycho about this kind of stuff and i can't say mm-hmm. anything without yeah. treading on someone's toes about it so i thankfully just... you have me in my dms oh my god you <laughs> it's you're such a relief you're a breath of fresh air thank you said <laughs> it's true it's i mean yeah. it's honestly true um but yeah sorry sorry that was my that was my blurt of anger and hopefully i've got it out of my system and i don't need to get angry about pe- other people suffering as though it's uh, aimed at me anymore if any listeners here hate people with eating disorders <laughs> go ahead and dm me we're trying to start a support group <laughs> yeah. for people who hate eating disorders <laughs> i just don't like being a party to it like i don't like it when people involve me in it and i don't mean me personally but like when you start posting about like here's my lunch and it's like a lemon and three carrot sticks or something <laughs> like don't, i know what you're doing i know what you're doing you're trying to get attention for this unhealthy behavior that you are subjecting yourself to and i don't want to be part of that don't make me part of that like show it to someone who is like in your pro anna group or something like just don't show it to me or anyone else that doesn't need to be exposed to this stuff i don't know i feel very very fortunate it seems like when people talk about this stuff it seems like a lot of it comes from their families like it seems like the a big contributor for why a lot of at least with women i don't know about men so much but at least with women why they have eating disorders is because their moms made them feel like shit about like you know eating too many chips or being slightly overweight or something like that being a good mom and so Oh my god! <laughs> Look, hey yeah. Tom, I just cal- I just calculated our respective BMIs, and someone's doing better than someone else. So just tread tread carefully here, okay? <laughs> Tabs is doing a gut check live. <laughs> <laughs> I got yep. the calipers out and everything. <laughs> <laughs> boys, boys, any thoughts on eating disorders? <laughs> no, nothing. Yeah. I'm sorry. Eating for... disorders are for women to talk about. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Sure. I'm sorry for yeah. ranting. I don't know. Every no, every it's, Twitter it's... person has every mental illness, and I, I think <laughs> maybe some of them are faking it. I'm I'm not sure. Maybe some of them. Yeah. I don't know. I'm glad that the three of you have that opinion because I like to uh, lead with compassion and. Uh, <laughs> oh, great. I don't know. Great. Enabler. <laughs> really. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm not totally without compassion. Like I was saying, like it seems like a, a terrible attitude coming from someone you love. That's a pretty t- terrible thing, like to to have to deal with. So I have sympathy in that sense. But like I said, I don't really like to be um, part of it. Um, mm-hmm. Like I I don't I don't have any. I I can't help, and I don't want to be party to like supporting it, like I, like enabling it just by not saying anything. So that's that's the part that annoys me people don't realize this because i use the r word but i am an empath <laughs> yeah uh-huh. <laughs> sure. i have a hard That's time so... relating to anything like with with eating disorders I, I don't understand how you can't just force yourself to eat something like that you just know is what you should be eating totally. you know I, I i'm sure it's 
difficult for some people for whatever reason. I just, I can't understand it. Like, yeah, can't you just put the food that you know you should eat on a plate that maybe a doctor or whatever has told you this is what you should be eating for lunch and then just eat that whether you like it or not? Just make yourself do it? I can't, I can't do that personally. No. Yeah, I, I was going to say, it, that's, no. that's hard. I don't know. Yeah. I also, uh, I mean, with me, a lot of like weird mental stuff comes into it where like uh, I get suspicious that people are listening to me cook, which is just like mm. straight straightforward psychosis kind of stuff. But like, mm. uh, um, and uh, yeah, so I usually wait until like midnight to, to cook dinner and stuff. Oh and, man, I don't know. It's uh, just little things like that, just fun, weird, <laughs> additional uh, quirks to life. So. <laughs> <laughs> Every yeah, day, I my, mean, I have... my sympathy for the Taliban grows stronger. <laughs> oh, my God. Sure. Yeah. I have that stuff about other other topics, like the that hatred of being observed. I yeah. Like, it, not about food, but, like, definitely about other stuff. And it, like, to yeah. a silly degree where it, like, keeps sure. me from doing stuff that I know that no one else cares about. Mm-hmm. But in my head, they do. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know that yeah. feeling, too. But I also have, like, an inner voice that says, like... Like, stop being such a pussy, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, <times>. not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, It's another one of those contradictions I have to deal with in myself. I, like, feel very judgmental about people who have eating disorders where they, like, restrict food to the point of starvation and then also, like, I'm, I definitely, like, overeat emotionally all the time. So, yeah. what's that, you know? Mm-hmm. Sure. Just yeah. eat normal, Sid. I'm doing great. <laughs> oh, okay. It's that easy. Well, I will. Well, yeah. t- Tom, do you also feel like you don't understand addictions, like drug, alcohol addictions? Uh... uh on yeah on some level i don't like really get it but i i understand like some of that like impulsive sort of behavior Mm -hmm. yeah what about ritual behaviors not impulsive ones huh no i guess not then that's the answer (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) never thought about it Uh, yeah i mean i don't i actually don't know if it's correct quote unquote to to say it's the same thing you know food and then whatever substance yeah Mm -hmm. um but perhaps it is (laughs) (laughs) and that's my uh and i'm sort of a a scholar on (laughs) eating carrot sticks doing heroin it's the same Mm -hmm. it's the same thing sure um okay well why don't we wrap it up uh soon if that's cool I don't know. Sure. Let's uh, maybe do a couple questions or something. Okay. All right. Um, continuing off of the pornography discussion, can we say that oh, hentai boy. is of a superior moral character compared to live action porn due to the lack of performers being exploited? I would say um, that that is a good element to it. Um, but one thing that is probably not so good is for the mental health of the consumer, um, of it. Yeah. Because when you are not restrained by, um, the limitations of the real world, you get into totally, like, people have a lot of fetishes for things that don't exist and can never exist. And that doesn't seem Mm -hmm. like a good focus for your sexual energies. Um, and this is myself included, (laughs) just so you know, I'm just saying, I'm not trying to be like a jerk to anybody else, but, um, it doesn't seem to be a productive place to put your imagination and your, yeah, basically your sexual energy. So yeah, it's good that it doesn't harm, uh, people in the, like the actual performing doesn't harm people, but it, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's great for um, people who make it or who, who consume it uh, themselves. Yeah, just jerk normal. That's that's what I think. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. No, I agree though. I think I think like even with regular porn, uh, my thing is more that it's bad to consume it rather than 
the whole thing about like people being exploited and stuff like yeah that's true but then there's so many cases where that's not really the issue and so it mm-hmm. just kind of feels like people kind of made up this like sort of like liberal position about it to be like they feel like they want to be anti-porn but they have to have some like material reason to dislike something like that or whatever you can just feel like it's bad for people i don't know yeah but having sexual hang-ups or fetishes that do exist in the, or can be accessed in the real world that has dangers right yeah. i mean yeah you know, I, I just saw a chart today on the internet. It was a map of, uh, where the fuck was Chernobyl? The Ukraine? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was in Ukraine. Or it, it was a map of the Ukraine, and it was, uh, no, it wasn't Ukraine. It was some place where there had been some sort of radioactive disaster. And, uh, th- there was one map that showed by area, uh, like the number one sexual fetishes. <laughs> And all the highly highly radiated areas had hentai. Was it Japan? So I that's mean... it was. It was. Well, okay. No, 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 no. Uh, I don't know what it was. It wasn't Japan. It might have been. Uh. <laughs> okay. Either way, that's my comment on that. <laughs> well, I don't have uh, radiation as my excuse, so that's just putting that out there. I don't know five G. Mm-hmm. You know what they say. That's Makes right. you. I didn't look at hentai. Oh, is that what they say? Yeah. Oh, okay. There. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I have no opinion on uh, hentai. I have no idea. I've, I've never really... I, I've only seen it when uh, people post it. Uh, like as a or, joke? Uh, yeah. So. In your yeah. personal or, hentai or, sub form? Yeah. Sure. Well, <laughs> or usually usually when like the hateful people I follow uh, are showing me um, sad people kind of thing. Sad characters that they follow mm. and stuff like that so yeah mm. it does seem associated it does seem some sort of uh, uh correlation although i was thinking the other day that like all the people that we hated in like the early 2000s internet now are like probably had great lives kind of thing you know like that like all the people that were like invested into bitcoin and were like <laughs> furries and all that you know i don't like, i don't know about furries aging into a wonderful life that doesn't no, seem true yeah, they've been they've got like 20 great conventions that they went to over the last few years kind of thing <laughs> just having the time all of their CEOs lives CEOs are furries enjoying mm-hmm. the financial then... freedom that comes with cryptocurrency <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and then uh you know all the people in the hentai forums now like are millionaires from selling like original hentai art or something and mm, then and then no <laughs> people like me are like sad sacks who are like <laughs> Why didn't I become a furry Bitcoin guy 20 years ago or something? <laughs> yeah. Why, oh, why? Oh, man. Yeah. I just realized, is that why, like, Dogecoin and Shiba Coin are so popular? No, oh. those are just larger memes. All right. Okay. <laughs> Shut up, <Dad. laughs> I mean, <laughs> sorry, that's just true. Sure. All right, next question. If it could be mathematically proven that believing in God was ultra cringe, would you become atheist? <laughs> no, we, we already know that we already defy cringe. We it's how it is already. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what? It may very well be ultra cringe already as well. Um, but that doesn't that doesn't the nature of the truth doesn't change. Yeah. Our, our relationship to the truth is the only thing that changes. Sure. It's important to me to be a martyr at all times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. So. Okay. Uh, next one. How believable to find China's COVID reporting? 4,600 deaths in a country of 1.4 billion spread over that much land with that much poverty and rural population is quite a claim. I don't think the rural population is really where COVID is a really huge problem. All those bat yeah, what the, who the stuff? fuck wrote this question? <laughs> <laughs> Some Taiwanese yeah. guy. Uh, <laughs> Some Falun Gong guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't believe anything China says. I don't think China actually exists. Yeah. It's just like <laughs> Greater Japan or something. 
Mm. Mm. It's not my problem, and I'm not authorized to have an opinion on it. I I don't I don't I don't know if anyone's numbers there are actually trustworthy. Yeah, that's true. But China in particular, like, does not even try to make it reasonable. No, that's pretty egregious to pretend that it's four thousand people. <laughs> yeah. I kind of think it's based, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It is. Four thousand people died, but seven thousand people have superpowers now. So that's <laughs> not, not too bad over here. <laughs> I don't know. I I think that like the fact that they're shutting down whole cities for like a few cases or something like that kind of thing, it wouldn't jive with the idea that there's a lot more cases that we don't know about or something like that kind of thing. I don't know. That's what I think. Kind of. Although it is, there are cases like that, like similarly, like in other places where like. Vietnam or especially like you know like Cuba and stuff where people were like posting memes and bragging for like a year about mm-hmm. like them not having any cases and basically like the socialist healthcare system being so much better and stuff and then you know uh, them hitting a big spike more lately and stuff and uh, yeah it's kind of uh, I don't know that's why I, that's why I said for like for a while I was like we gotta like just maybe take a few years and then look backwards at like what yeah. worked and what didn't don't like yeah. be like yep. you know oh we figured it out or whatever and stuff like that definitely so. it is kind of funny to <laughs> like point to china like locking people in their apartments as like look how great socialist health care is it's like okay um maybe not the best example of like something that you're trying to promote in your own country i don't know sure I mean, if it if it works, that's the thing. Like, willing. I think the positive thing there is like willingness to to sacrifice for the greater good. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. sacrificing. I don't, I don't, you I don't know, even like have that's... a problem with it. I'm just saying that that's a funny example of something to be like. See, look how good this healthcare system is. That's not even really healthcare. Yeah. That's, that's just people like sure. the state coming in and like you know, yeah, a, a, applying uh, some impositions on people. Sure. Don, are you vaxxed up? Uh, me? Yeah, I'm double yeah. vaxxed. Yeah. yeah. Love that for you. Yeah, mm-hmm. we both are. Do any of you have anti-vax, you know, family or acquaintances? Mm. No, I, not, I don't think, well, at least not that I know of. Mm. Um, I'm the closest thing to that, and so therefore I become the <laughs> devil to... <Yeah. laughs> no, I Fair mean, enough. it's just weird, like, just, just it's it's frustrating because like you know anything less than everyone should get vaccinated because the vaccines will save us and covid is going to go away as soon as everybody is vaccinated anything less than that gets you tarred and as as a uh, anti-vaxxer like i was like yeah it seems like the the vaccines you know give protection for um for a few months like three or four months and uh and then kind of tapers off after that and uh um, it does seem to lessen the severity uh, if you if you are vaccinated and you catch it, it seems to lessen the severity. And my brother was like, "I'm glad you did get vaxxed instead of putting your money where your mouth is." Jesus. <laughs> I was like, "Okay, you could maybe calm down a little bit." Like I think anything are other around. than what's that? I think people are coming around to seeing that it's not a cure-all yeah but they still think that they were right all along and that everyone else is like an anti-vax moron Uh, and all this kind of stuff that's that's so annoying to me yeah uh who could who could have lived through the past few months and also be like no it's great don't say anything bad about it yeah yeah Yeah. it's 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 not good i mean it's not that good i'm sorry it's it's not doing what everyone was told it would do. Yeah, or at least led it's to doing believe. great things. It, it may be the best thing right. that we have going, and it should be. Right. Some, maybe it's something that everyone should get. Like that. That those are two separate truths, right? Yeah, like that, that right. can be yeah. true. It can right. also be true that it's kind of not that great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I just hope that. Um, I mean, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but I hope people are scientists and and companies are still working on possibly other therapeutics because um yeah i mean it would be it would kind of it would make me sad if this is all we got (laughs) and it was just like vaccines and boosters forever uh yeah Mm -hmm. that would that would be kind of depressing it would be nice to see some progress on other fronts but you know it takes time like you were saying don 
like we need a little bit of perspicacity here. <laughs> like it may be in a few years we could step back and look at a bit more information, but we're really not going to know the answers right now in the thick of it, you know? Mm -hmm. There's some new antivirals out that aren't vaccines, but mm. are coming out at least. I know this only because this woman who I hate follow, my childhood <laughs> best friend's older sister is, uh, you know, Northern California libertarian. Uh. And she, you know, she posted something like, Merck just came out with this new drug and guess what? It's uh, ivermectin, but it's rebranded. And it's like, I googled it. It is, it's an antiviral. It has, it has no, nothing in common with ivermectin. And I'm mm. just like, anyway, so there are things coming out. That I guess right wing, well, yeah, right wing <laughs> well, nut I jobs. Hope, think I of. hope it's accessible <laughs> for like fairly normal people too. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm curious. I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's finish with this one. It says, uh, "Why do you think people have gay voice or autistic voice, like the Chiwi guy? Do you think being autistic is kind of like being a bit gay?" Thanks. Like the Chiwi guy. Yeah, they're saying he has autistic voice, I guess, or gay voice. I've never heard, never his, heard voice. his voice. Well, we did an episode with him, so I guess that's what they're... Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I've heard his voice for about an hour and a half before. <laughs> God, what an asshole I am. Um, what does he have? Does he have what you would consider one of those voices? I see what they're saying. I wouldn't describe it that way. He does have a distinct way of speaking. Hmm. It's called a Korean Autism accent. Autism is a... F Wait, is he? He's not autistic. No, I, I think if if it's if I were you know put to like I had to choose it. Does he have a gay voice or autistic voice? I would say gay more than autistic. <laughs> <laughs> well, God. autism is a form of of mind queerness. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We can that all is, agree on that. That is true. So yeah, Brain I think queer. you've answered the question. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. they're the neurodivergent. Um, you know, aspect of that is is queering is queering the brain. Yeah. So there you and go. And similarly, it's also like a made up Western construct that doesn't exist in based <laughs> traditional societies like <laughs> Taliban. No, I just or... watched a show. I just watched a show with a Maori autist. So did he do haka <laughs> in a stupid way or something? Oh my god! <laughs> Actually, I watched the wedding and they did the uh, the didgeridoo thing. I thought Wait, didgeridoo was Australian. Oh shit! I've really I got myself in hot water. <laughs> okay. I hate when I mix up different <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, you can go ahead and edit that one. Out. <laughs> they would have Maoris in Australia, you know, like they're seafaring folk, right? I mean. It's not that far away. And <laughs> trying to get away from Australia, not towards oh, yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. If you're headed for Australia, you're going the wrong way. Yeah. Um, anyways, thanks for coming on. Uh, <laughs> <Sid>. <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, I apologize for everything. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. And, uh, thanks for thank having me, guys. Yeah. And thanks for joining us again, Tabs. <laughs> Of course, if Sid is on, thank you know, thank you for sure. indulging me. I I gotta be with Sid. Thanks. I gotta. I gotta. <laughs> gotta have her. Yeah, this was fun. Sure. Thank you guys. All right. So if you like this episode and you'd like a second episode of You Can't Win Every Week, you can subscribe to the Patreon and you'll get that as well as access to our Discord where you can chat with us and our lovely community. If you want to send us anonymous questions, you can go to our Twitter account at You Can't Win Pod and you'll find a link to the Curious Cat pin there. Thanks for listening and we'll catch you next week.